Hi guys, this is Drew. We're doing an upper extremity venous ultrasound duplex. And I have my coworker slash ultrasound student Sky here to help me out. Thank you for volunteering. And thank you guys for bullying me into doing this. I'm nervous, so let's see what happens. So we have a, our Philips Epic 5G ultrasound machine. I'm gonna use the 12 probe today, the linear probe. And we're going to check the preset venous upper extremity. Gotta have all the things right before we start. And I actually created a protocol that we're going to use for this. So first, I start with the internal jugular vein. So we're checking for blood clots in the deep veins or in the superficial veins to see if this would be superficial venous thrombophlebitis. I usually have the patient supine. If they're a little bit elevated, then that's good. And for the internal jugular vein, I usually get them to look straight ahead. If they strain their head or turn it one way or another, it's a little bit more difficult to compress. Okay, so warm gel. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start kind of near the base of the neck. Turn my gain down some, and the internal jugular vein is usually more anterior to the carotid artery. Don't want to scan the carotid artery, just the jugular. So I'm going to compress. You're not going to choke the patient if you're using the right amount of pressure. Don't push too hard though. So I'm compressing until you can't see the vein too much anymore. And there's my first image, starting on the right side here, and now. I took the transverse image. I'm gonna turn slowly, longitudinally on the neck, notch facing, facing the patient's head. And we're gonna get on the internal jugular, turn on the color, and we're gonna turn, make sure the box is turned the right way as well. Steer the box. Make sure our color looks good and we're going to take the pulse wave. I usually have the waveform on the bottom. Turn this baby up some. I usually don't do any type of augment or anything. Nothing special for just the waveform. Cool, that's done. Now we're gonna move underneath the collarbone to the subclavian vein. It's toasty in here. Grab some of that gel and we're gonna go right under the collarbone here. Make sure my label is right. So I start in longitudinal, usually for the subclavian vein. Find the collarbone and angle downwards. Make sure you're not on the artery, but on the vein. And stretch it out. There we go. I'm going to adjust this seat if I can. Perfect. Better ergonomics, guys. I'm going to take the color in 2D. Now, here's my trick. You can squeeze the inside of the patient's arm. Or, I learned this from a coworker. you can get them to sniff really hard and fast through your, their nose. And I'll let you know when. So let me make sure I'm on the vein. So I'm going to ask Sky can do me a favor. Can you sniff really hard and fast through your nose like this? Look at that. That augments the blood flow going back towards the heart. So here, we type augment for the IAC. Boom. Subclavian done. If you notice, I did not perform compressions or attempt compressions on the subclavian vein. That's because it's located behind a bone but I relied on secondary factors to determine the presence of a blood clot, such as color flow, pulse wave Doppler. If you are only able to obtain continuous flow or even no flow in that vessel, then you know there's an issue going on. Done. Now we're gonna go under the arm for the axillary vein. I, but I usually like to wipe off the gel first, just so we don't get too messy here. Clean as I go. Okay, so now, can you move your arm out to the side like this? Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna put a washcloth right under here. There we go. I'm gonna start in transverse. And you guys can do this protocol however your facility wants you to do it. That's how you can do it. 
So I angle closer towards the trunk and try to find the compressible vein. I want to get it before all the veins split. I like that. I like the look of that. I'm gonna press and you see the artery was pumping still on this side. I'm gonna put with compression here, artery compressed vein. I'm gonna turn from transverse to longitudinal get that vein stretched out well. And then turn on color. And steer. If you don't know how to steer, I did create a course for that. You do need to know how to do that. You really do. Take a 2D first. And then get our pulse wave. And now I'm gonna squeeze on the inside of Sky's arm. That's a little bit of an augment. Let's see if I can get it any better. That's as good as it's gonna get. I'm not gonna hurt my patient. So, augment. And then from the axillary, we're gonna follow it all the way down Till it starts splitting so it has already split some and now we're going to try to look for the brachial veins so usually with the brachial veins not all the time but there's one artery in the middle and then two veins on the side does my breath stink <laughs> okay good um some people have two sets of brachial veins and two sets or two branchial arteries so you do want to be aware of that so this one looks pretty normal we just have one of the veins being bigger and the other one is smaller mm. artery vein vein and then we're going to turn longitudinal and get Pulse wave with augments of each of the veins. Squeeze. That's a good augment. And I'm going to try to get this other one. If you ever get lost, go more proximally and just compress to make sure that you're on the right vein. There it splits a little bit. Okay, so we're going to find this smaller one, stretch this smaller one out. If you need more color filling, you can increase the gain. You can make your color box smaller. You can lower the wall filter, lower the Flow output, lower your scale. There's a lot of options what you can do. Squeeze. And we're getting catching some of the artery as well with it because it's so close. But we got it. So with all the veins, whenever you're checking for thrombus, you want to compress every few centimeters to make sure there's no clot there, anywhere. And I'd like to emphasize that compressions is the primary way to determine the presence or absence of blood clot. Not color flow, not pulse wave, not 2D, but compressions. Okay, brachial vein done. That's all of the deep veins I typically look at. Some facilities will require you to look at the radial and ulnar veins as well. Not all. Those are tricky because they're teeny tiny. But you don't necessarily have to always look at those. It just depends on your facility. Don't get in trouble listening to me.
So we're gonna check out the basilic vein. Moving on to superficial. So the basilic vein is going to be more medial. So the medial to the brachial veins. What vein is hanging out by itself? That will be the basilic. And sometimes it takes a while to find. And some, on some people you just cannot see it. I'm gonna take my time, see if I can find it. And I'm gonna go up to the axillary again, see if that helps me. See one little vein coming off here. It's teeny tiny though. And I'm not confident enough to call it a basilic vein. That looks like it could be a basilic vein right there. Okay, so this splits, everyone's different. So this one is closer to the elbow where it splits off. So let's see, just take these images here and compress. Compress as far down as I can see it. And we can go ahead and do color and pulse wave. Okay, clean as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe this off. How are you doing, Sky? Fantastic. All right. <laughs> okay. You can relax your shoulder finally from all of that. And the cephalic vein, this comes off the subclavian vein and it runs down the outside of the arm. So we're gonna, it runs all the way down. And the basilic vein runs down to the rest of the arm as well. But we're gonna double check. I couldn't follow it much farther than the elbow, but we'll double check and see if we can see it on the forearm as well. I'm gonna move my machine as I move. If someone has teeny tiny veins, you can also use the a higher frequency probe. This is a linear 18 megahertz probe. We're gonna stick with this one for now. So, put down the probe and I saw it right there. Nice and juicy. Thanks for drinking that water. So we're gonna follow it up as much as we can. Okay. And compress it all the way down. Sorry, I'm pushing hard right here. There we go. And you see it split near the antecubital fossa. Just gonna compress, compress. Split some more. So we followed it, followed it all the way down to the wrist, and we're going to take our representative images. Gonna invert this color. It would be nice if I could get it straight on the screen. The cephalic vein is one of the hardest to stretch out in longitudinal, so get what you can. And augment. Gonna invert my waveform. Boom, that's done. Okay, so we're gonna check the inside here to see if we can see more of that brachial vein. Right, basilic rather. Yep. Okay, sometimes when doing these, you have to get in awkward positions just to make sure. So I'm gonna get hold your wrist up and then see if I can follow this vein. And you see this vein is wrapping around the bottom of her arm. 
that's where the way the basilic vein goes. If you see like muscular guys, sometimes you can see it like going around here and like, oh yeah, that's the stuff. More gel. I'm squeezing really hard on your arm here. Do you have a blood clot? Probably. Okay. It's just hard to compress, but we're getting it. There we go. Okay. So you can see it here as I compress the, the basilic. You can always take more images. You can say right basilic forearm, FA4 short. Now I'll show you guys how to get the radial in ulnar. I saw some mnemonic radial. You hold your arm out like this radial. Your thumb is up towards the sun, the radius of the sun. This side is the radial and then this side. Is, I forgot the one for the ulnar. I think it was under ulnar. If you hold your arm out to the side, under ulnar. Down. I'm gonna get to the inside. We're gonna go back to the brachial. Brachial artery. Sometimes you can use the artery to find the veins. Just gonna follow it down into the AC fossa past it. And then you're gonna see the veins split. The ulnar veins and arteries dive down and the radial kind of start stays more anterior. Here's the radial vessels. Let me try the higher frequency. See if I can see them a little bit better. Okay, you can see them a bit better. Artery, vein, vein. right radial veins with compression and let's see if we can do the veins here's the other the ulnar vessels diving down more deeply and as you can see oops i am more on the medial side of her arm okay ulnar artery ulnar vein vein there's the artery, can't really see the veins with the compression. Okay, so that's how you do the right arm. I did want to add a tip for if you are scanning a patient with a larger bust. If they are lying flat, that tissue, it rises up to the top of their chest and to the neck area. So you will likely want to elevate the head of the bed a little bit more so that gravity can do its thing and the breast tissue can get out of the way so you can see what you need to see and they won't feel suffocated either as a patient. I'm going to show you the positioning for the left side and that's pretty much it. Left side, you just do the same thing. It's not much of a difference. You usually will have to do, if you do a unilateral order, you will have to check the opposite subclavian vein, the contralateral subclavian vein, but that's about it. What you can do, Sometimes when I was in the hospital, I would actually move the machine to the other side of the stretcher. Let me see. And then scan with my left arm the left side. Or do you mind, um, let me flatten this out. What I would do is just get the patient to flip. Like if it's an outpatient, I'll get them to flip and turn their head this way. <laughs> Just like that, and then they'll be flat. But that's how I'll close this out. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Sky. And I'm we're doing two, at least one more video so today. So check out our other demos that we're doing. Bye. Testing one, two, three with my homie Sky in the uh, lab. <laughs> yes, we're in the lab. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>